Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the You Are Radically Loved Summit. And I am joined by a very special guest. Today, we have one of my dearest, dearest mentors and somebody that I've looked up to for many, many years. She is the best selling author of Playing Big and somebody I talk about in this book. And I couldn't think of a better person to come here and talk about the power of creativity. So, this chapter is really all about um, having to be in a creative place sometimes to think yourself out of a situation that's not great and how we need creativity in order to find new ways of being, new ways of thinking, changing our perspective and so on. And so here is Tara Moore to talk to us about chapter two. Well, welcome. Welcome to the You Are Radically Loved Summit. I'm so excited to be seeing you. I, You know, here's the thing, Tara, like I feel like I talk to you all the time in my head. <sighs> or sometimes I feel like I, I hear your words from playing big play in my mind and I feel like I'm talking to you but thank you so much oh. for being here well I love that I love that and I feel like I've known you forever it's funny I feel I've always just felt so at home with you and I'm just delighted that we get to talk today yeah well thank you so much for doing this so I, I thought it was really a, a great um, idea for you to come on and, and talk about this particular topic because uh, in this chapter what really uh the intention behind it was how creativity not only plays a role in every single person's lives but specifically for my development you know this this is the part of the book where we're talking about the mind and i'm talking about how i had to think creatively to get myself out of the situation that i was in you know growing up in this really chaotic environment and gang violence and not really having any mentors or people to look up to. How do you think yourself, how do you think creatively to get yourself out of a situation so that you create a better, a better life? And so I'd really just love your take on creativity as a whole and how you see creativity and why you, that makes sense or not basically i'm like psychoanalyze me like why did i why was i able to to come yeah. out of that experience you know yeah mm. I, i'm so excited there's so much i want to talk about about this um well first of all i want to say this is one of my favorite words period so creativity creative so when i saw it in the list i was like please can i have that one <laughs> please and um for me, I think of, you know, create creativity is one of my core values. So actually anytime I'm feeling unhappy or stuck, you know, there's usually three things I check. It's, it's I kind of do a check of like, what's going on with spirituality, what's going on with connection and what's going on with creativity. And inevitably I'll find if, if one of those, the tank is not full, that will be like the source of my unhappiness or bad mood or resentment or stuckness or whatever. So it's super important to me personally. And, you know, when you're talking, I'm thinking about, um, there's a very popular quote that I believe originally came from Marion Wright Edelman, the head of the Children's Defense Fund. Um, and I'm sure many people have heard it requoted. Um, this idea that you can't be what you can't see. You can't be what you can't see. And this is often used to, you know, talk about for kids in under-resourced communities, they need role models and all of that. And I think it's such an important point. And whenever I have heard that, I have also had the reaction, of course you can be what you can't see that's how we have firsts of all kinds. And that's how we have generational change that is real. And sometimes I think in our culture, there's an overemphasis on like, provide the role model, provide the mentor, 
because we're really lacking the tools and vocabulary to talk about the inner vision and the inner compass and the inner creativity mm. that could guide someone like you to create a very different life that I, I would guess you would say there's no one you saw that both held your identity, right? And that's living the life you're living now. And in some sense, that is true actually for all of us, because all of us are meant to have a completely unique path. So I guess that's, that's one jumping off point for us is, and then, you know, what is that? What is that inner process Yeah, that helps us grow into something we've never seen outside of our mind's eye? Yeah, I find it because it's such a, yeah, it's such a compelling statement because in a way you say, yes how am I supposed to think myself out of the situation that I don't have a clear vision or model to guide me? But at the same time, there is this inner seeing, this inner knowing that exists within us. And I know that that's true for me to be able to have, you know, gone through the path that I went through and to be able to get through the, to the other side, there was no model. There was no seeing. There was a feeling and there was this deep sense of knowing that I was going in the right direction, even though I couldn't see what that direction was, right? There was this just inner yeah like knowing that i just needed to keep moving forward i I needed to keep progressing and i would oftentimes talk myself out of it overthinking it like oh but yeah but what does this mean and i think also there was a the fear of um being alone right or doing it by myself because Mm -hmm. for For me to make a decision that counteracted my environment and community, my tribe, meant I would be by myself. I would be alone. I would be Mm -hmm. spurned from my tribe. I would be exiled because I then was going against the grain. Mm. And so, yeah, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that, like especially to in the world of, of trying to do something outside of the box, right. In general, I think this is something everybody can relate to. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And there's just, there's a few things that I think are, um, valuable to just underscore because they're, they're themes that show up for so many people. So one is, you know, I hear you speaking about this distinction between like, did the plan arrive in words or did it arrive in a feeling or in an image? Um, And there's, there's a a line I love from, um, I think it's from a physicist. I can't remember his name right now, but he says the future arrives first as a feeling. And, um, and I think a lot of times I find too, in my, in my courses and in my coaching work, it arrives for people through imagery but it's very hard for people to trust that in our culture. So, you know, if you ask someone, what do you want to do? They'll say, I have no idea and I don't know what I want and I don't know how to do it. And then if I just say, well, when you think about, you know, what you'd really love, like what pictures come, like, let's just let it be wispy, fragmented pictures. And then people can say, I kind of see myself with groups, or I see myself helping young people, or I see myself in this kind of space. And I think in a healthy culture, we would be relying equally on imagery and words Mm. to guide our lives. But I think part of like patriarchy and left brain dominance and um, just even kind of a way of really controlling people has been to say, 
If it's not in a business plan or if it can't be written out on a LinkedIn page, it's not real. So that's the first thing to the, the like moving into the realm of imagery and feeling. And sometimes even in coaching, you know, I'll just say to people even like, okay, this, this new, you know, person you want to be, or this new space you want to be in, like, what color would you give that? Mm. And people can immediately be like, oh, it's bright pink or like, oh, it's dark blue. And then we'll say, okay, just like seep into that dark blue. And they'll be like, oh, and the dark blue is this and this and this, and they can adopt this whole new stance just from a color. So that's one piece. The other piece I hear is this idea of like, it's, it's a direction, which is different than a plan. And, and, you know, I like to think about this as the foggy path, like it's usually is a foggy path, but you usually get granted the, the gift of seeing like one half cobblestone in front of the one you're on, (laughs) you know, you don't see the shape of the path. You don't know the length of the path. You don't know, you know, in six months, is there going to be a sharp right turn, but you can kind of hear the pull of like, what's the one next thing? And you can go a long way doing the one next thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love what you're saying. And to me, it's the imagery, right? Like I love that imagery because it feels completely in alignment to how I relate to the creativity, you know, and I, I love that you're describing it in different ways for people, because I think that sometimes for somebody it might be a listening like you're listening to it you might be seeing it it might be uh a tactile experience i think it's it's really uh it's a really fun process to discover what that is for you and one of the things that i wanted to ask you was when it when it comes to being creative or or exploring your own uniqueness what are the common what are the the biggest missteps that we do in, in trying to, is it something that we, we kind of let in or, or is it something we have to work towards? Like, how do you see creativity, um, Mm. processing? Yeah. (sighs) It's interesting because I just, you know, I grew up doing modern dance and, um, improvisational modern dance. No, you know, sometimes there was choreography, but mostly there was no choreography, but in a group, you know, and, um, and, and we just had a reunion, like two weeks ago, we just had a reunion of my, this like group that I danced with, with in childhood and through my teenage years. And the, and our teacher came who's, you know, now in her eighties and we got on the zoom. I was, I was, I mean, I was uncontrollably bawling through the whole thing. It didn't matter what anyone said. It just was touching such a deep, tender place in me and seeing their faces and hearing her voice. And, but I always say like, that's where I learned creativity. It wasn't just about dance. That's where I learned creativity. And I think a lot of what I learned there is like when you're in a creative process, by definition, you don't know the outcome Mm. and you therefore have to like trust, trust the mystery. It's sort of saying, I don't know where this is going to go, but I'm going to hang out and work, work with it anyway. Um, and I'm going to follow ideas that sort of haven't announced their end destination or even their purpose to me yet. So I do think that that, um, comes naturally I mean, I have two kids, they're four and seven. And I, I, you know, I don't think any parent of a three-year-old would say, I just can't get my three-year-old to trust their opinions and ideas. You know, they're so timid and uncertain and tentative about what they think. Like they know what they think and they know what they think about the way that piece of toast was sliced, you know, and it is a strong opinion. So, but, you know, with my kids, they see that they, they just go very interesting places with their imagination. So I don't think we have to um, cultivate creativity, but I do think 
unfortunately in adulthood, most of us end up having to rediscover Mm. or retrust our creativity because we don't get the messages at home or at school. Just follow your ideas. Isn't that interesting how it worked out for you? It might look different than every other kid in the class, but great. You know, everything is kind of ranked on a scale, which is really counter to what creativity is all about. So there is a, there is a process of creative recovery that I think a lot of us have to go through, um, in adulthood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like the freedom in that. And I think all the conditioning we have to go through to get to that place where, where we don't have, it's like, if we don't have it, we know it. But if, if we're trying to get there, it's like, if we're in, in the flow of that creativity and we're not used to being in that flow, it's so easy to talk ourselves out of it. Do you know what I mean? So it's this yes. process of, uh, yeah, like you said, relearning and just allowing the process of creativity to just take, take root and just have this be, have this experience, just be whatever it's going to be without attachment. Yes. And trust, I think is such an important word, you know, because the process does require trust in the, in oneself and in the process. And, um, I guess I would also say, I think it's important to differentiate trust from confidence. Like, as you know, I'm not a big fan of the idea of confidence. And it's, I think, you know, when we're, when we're in the frame of mind that we have to believe, like, I'm good at this. I can do this. It's going to be great. Um, That's actually a very egoic place to be where we're assessing ourselves and we think we need to assess ourselves in some positive way. Well, self-assessment is just a disaster to begin with. Like (laughs) the way our brains work, we're never, no one is going to assess themselves kindly and in a positive way on a consistent basis. That doesn't happen. So like we can just skip the self-assessment part. So it's not about, I know I can do this change in my life. I know I can pull this project off. Like I, 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 it's more like I'm going to engage in the process and I trust the creative process and I trust the spirit of what wants to unfold here it just has a different, a very different energy to it. Yeah, it definitely feels more expansive. Mm-hmm. And softer. Yeah. And yeah. it's more dependable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel like I'm fighting for something, right? Yes. I'm trying to achieve or acquire. It feels way more fluid and open ended. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. Um, I, I'm like, I feel like we're just getting started. Um, where can people go for more information or to connect with you? Um, you can go to taramore.com and, um, there's lots of great writings there for free. The playing big book is a really great way to experience, um, more of, the things I love to share with people about. And then we have lots of um, online courses too. We'll put all of those links below uh, in the description, wherever it is. I keep saying below, but you guys, it might be over here. It might be over here. I'm not sure exactly (laughs) where in the process of this it is, but uh, the links will be there. Please definitely connect with Tara as soon as you can. Uh, she's got some great programs and playing big. If you've not heard me talk about this book really changed my life. I mean, I learned so many incredible things that still to this day, uh, play a huge role in, in how I, I do my work and how I, um, yeah, how I just show up. So please definitely, uh, pick that up. We'll put the link to that book as well. And, um, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you so much for being with us, Tara, today. It means so much to me. I so appreciate you and all the work that you do. Thank you so much for supporting me and for supporting us. And, uh, I'm excited to see you all tomorrow. 
Uh, can't wait to hear what you guys thought. And um, yeah, we'll be back.